Welcome to Big Z Sports presentation of high school wrestling. In this IVC matchup, the Claymont Mustangs host the Indian Valley Braves. Tonight's match is presented by Eurexville Eagles Post 2264, Ron's Heating and Cooling, Bullseye Pheasant and Duck Hunting, The Designer Stone Company, Little Caesars Pizza, The Commercial and Savings Bank, and The 922 drive Through. Now let's head out to Claymont High School in the PAC Drilling Mobile Studio with Nick McWilliams and Travis Poland. Wednesday evening, Big Z Sports fans, it's a first for Big Z Sports as we're here down on the mat at Claymont High School, the Mustangs versus the Braves. It's dual meet action in wrestling. Thank you so much for joining us tonight on what promises to be a fun one between the Braves and the Mustangs. Nick McWilliams along for the ride with you tonight. And beside me, somebody new for Big Z Sports, Travis Poland. And if you're a Claymont wrestling fan, I'm sure you've heard that name before. Travis, very excited to get you out here for, uh, well, your first action with us, obviously. A lot of extensive history with you when it comes to wrestling. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me on here. It's an exciting match. Exciting to, uh, to get out here and, and watch these guys go. Uh, Claymont's only got, I, I think this is their last home duel until they have their super duels. So um, it, it's, it's great, good, great crowd here tonight. Get to watch some, watch some great wrestling. Could be a real fun duel. Absolutely. And I, and I, w I definitely want to ask for your insight on this because, you know, I think I kind of got this vibe from both coaches. But uh, with so few really dual meets that you actually have, obviously a lot of the uh, invitationals, other things along those lines, how big are moments like this in terms of uh, teaching you for that tournament time that's coming up in just a couple months? Well, uh, first off, these, these two teams are both Division II, so they're going to see each other at the sectional, possibly at the sectional tournament, definitely at the district tournament. So they're going to see each other multiple times throughout the year. They're also going to see each other at the IVC tournament, so um, they, they have to get comfortable wrestling these guys. You might end up wrestling the same guy three, four, maybe even five times throughout the year, and, and if you're wanting to punch your ticket to state, you better be familiar with your guy, and you're going to have to beat him multiple times. And I got to say, you know, coming in here, looking around at the uh, the stands here uh, at Claymont, I, I'm in so impressed. I mean, the stands packing up here real quick. This gives you that uh, idea behind how important this is, both for the Indian Valley and the Claymont communities, both with very great wrestling wrestling histories on either side. Yeah, there's there's a, there's a lot of history here. You know, uh, uh, we, we as as Claymont people, there's there's a long history of excellence here that that everybody tries to follow. Uh, Coach Tokenen uh, led this program to nearly four. 400 dual victories. These were days before you went to, to tournaments where you had five duels in one day. He would do it one at a time, just like tonight. One match tonight, two weeks later you got another one, and two weeks later you got another one. It, was, it, it, it just took a lot of years of excellence to build that up. So our fan base is, is all familiar with wrestling. They love it. Indian Valley's done a tremendous job. They, they started wrestling sometime in the early to mid-90s. That's when they started their program up, and they've really come a long way. They've done a great job recruiting and getting guys out for their team. Uh, all the way from the youth, middle school, all the way up to varsity these days. Absolutely. Well, we'll talk a little bit more uh, later on as uh, these matches are coming up for the varsity. We do expect it around 7 o'clock, somewhere around there. It is youth night, so we will be uh, seeing uh, the youth wrestlers being honored here for the uh, Claymont Mustangs. So we'll go ahead and take a quick timeout. First things first, though, we will talk to the coaches. We'll head down with he head coach Dusty Braun for the Braves. We'll head Matt's side, and we'll come back and talk a little bit more about these matchups before we get your action underway tonight. Big Z Sports is back after this. Are you looking for the perfect destination for a guy's hunting trip or simply want to get a practice shoot in? Well, Bullseye Pheasant and Duck Hunting gives you just that. Located on 183 acres outside of Eurexville, Bullseye offers pheasant, chukar, quail, and duck hunting in an authentic, fast-paced hunt from the comfort of a duck blind. To learn more, find Bullseye Pheasant and Duck Hunting on Facebook or give them a call at 740-922-5633. When heading to any event and you're in the McCulley Drive, Eurexville area, the place to stop is 922 drive Through for all of your on-the-go needs. They carry drinks, snacks, and all the necessities. With convenient hours of 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. Friday and Saturday, and 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Sunday, 922 drive Through is there for you. Also serving your needs at the shortstop location in Eurexville and CJ's drive Through in Denison. 
Ron's Heating and Cooling in Denison has been serving this great area since 1977. At Ron's, no matter what your needs, they can handle it. From heating and cooling to standby Generac generators, water heaters, tankless water heaters, mobile home equipment, duct cleaning, and 24-hour no-heat service. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you have to do is call 740-922-5252. Ron's Heating and Cooling proudly supports high school sports and would like to wish best of luck to all local athletes participating this season. We are the Tyson family and we would like to invite you to come visit your Little Caesars Pizza on West High Avenue in New Philadelphia. Looking for a quick and affordable lunch that's ready when you are? Try the lunch combo at Little Caesars Pizza. For just $5, you'll get half of a deep, deep dish pepperoni and cheese pizza plus a 20-ounce Pepsi product. This tasty $5 combo is available daily 11 until 2. And if you miss lunch, you can still take home the deep, deep dish Little Caesars Pizza all day, every day for only 8 bucks. Big taste, small price. Come visit us at Little Caesars Pizza on West High Avenue, New Philadelphia. Welcome back to Claymont Gymnasium. Big Z Sports back with our first ever dual meet with the Big Z Sports crew. Everything brought to you by Ron's Heating and Cooling as we go Matt side with the coach, Coach Dusty Braun for the Indian Valley Braves. Coach, kind of weird to be talking with you about wrestling. Uh, normally we're talking with you about softball, but I know your own self there, a very nice uh, career in high school with Indian Valley. Yeah, I mean, it's a good switch for me on, you know, what you expect and you're coaching boys, not girls. So it's a good experience for me and I, I enjoy it. Now, uh, Coach, last season you got an IVC uh, tournament championship right here in this very uh, gym. So a lot of momentum, I'm assuming, coming back to this kind of place and a lot of good memories from the past year. Yeah, we, we have a lot of good kids returning, and, and you have a good team. You think you're still the top dog in the conference, and we have great kids. We have good numbers, so competition breeds itself. Now, uh, Coach, three of your wrestlers, uh, in terms of that IBC tournament, they had individual titles, Leroy Stiegel, Hunter Albright, and Jackson Bircher. Have you been uh, kind of leaning on them early on in terms of what they've been kind of mentoring everybody else on the team, maybe some of those underclassmen? Leroy and Hunter are, you know, middle to lightweight guys, and they're they're very experienced. Hunter's a senior, Leroy's a junior, two guys we're counting on. You know, Jackson Bircher's a sophomore, he's still finding his way, but he's an athletic, big, strong kid. In today's world, that means a lot. And uh, also earlier on this year, Riverside Rumble, you guys did pretty good the, this month, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, probably still feeling pretty good from that? Yeah, we're off to a hot start. You know, we won the Cambridge tournament right off the bat, 17 teams, and went to Riverside for 25 teams. You know, you're seeing the D, the smaller side of the D1 schools. We got a big dual win the other day. We're, we're ready. It'll be whether we're ready under this environment. Now, Coach, an early season uh, dual meet uh, tilt here for you guys. What do you really expect to learn today? Maybe some of the things that you want to have uh, a building on as the season goes on. Well, as you take points, you'll see me sitting in the chair. I probably take more notes than I do holler and stuff. As you're trying to prepare your kids for the next 60 days for the tournament run. You know, I always tell people softball and wrestling are great sports. You can be Owen forever. You're in the tournament. It's not football where you have to be good now and get and get things cleaned up. We have plenty of time to clean it up. I think you'll see my team go out and compete hard today, and that's my claim to fame, keep it under wraps and go hard. And Coach, uh, not to give anything away too much there, but uh, what, what is the main message that you want to see out of your uh, kids? I know you kind of mentioned in terms of learning for tournament time, but what's the biggest thing you want to walk away with here and say that our guys did great? Composure, effort, and keeping it between the lines. You know, sometimes in wrestling it can get heated and this and that. I preach to my kids all week, it's a cross town rivalry. Claymont's trying to revamp what they had and don't fall into the trap of antagonizing or doing something that is outside the lines of what, what I'm trying to preach here at home. And that's what I want my kids to grow on, learn in this environment, be good in this environment, and have fun in this environment. Awesome, Coach. Well, thank you and good luck to you guys. Thanks for the coverage, guys. It's Indian Valley Braves head coach Dusty Braun as we get set for a dual meet matchup with the Claymont Mustangs. Coming up after this, we will go down to the mat with head coach for Claymont, Kyle Warner, brought to you by Ron's Heating and Cooling. We're back after this. Make your dream home a reality with Designer Stone Company in Port Washington. They offer granite and quartz countertops, custom made to fit your home. Explore Designer Showroom to discover the possibilities for your new kitchen or bath. The Designer Stone Company is on Facebook and conveniently located on State Route 36 in Port Washington.
planning your next vacation or home improvement project and worried about managing expenses, CSB can help with that. Setting a goal is the first step to achieving your vision, and CSB's Money Manager tool helps you get started. Whether you are recovering from Christmas spending or preparing to send kids to college, the Personal Financial Management tool helps you set goals, track your spending, and monitor your progress. Money Manager is available within CSB's online banking. Check it out today, the Commercial and Savings Bank member, FDIC. Welcome back to Claymont High School. Almost time for a dual meet between Indian Valley and the Claymont Mustangs. Now joining us is head coach Kyle Warner for the Mustangs. And uh, coach, you know, obviously now in that head coaching position, and obviously we know your history of wrestling here at Claymont, has to be nice getting a dual meet here at home and gets a lot of excitement. Oh yeah, the fans are, I mean, we got a big, pretty big crowd out there today. Uh, it's something that's kind of went away over a period of time. You know, we were so dominant for years on. Uh, the fans kind of just got used to staying at home because they knew the end result. Uh, so it's nice to see the uh, bleachers full again. You know, tonight's youth night, so we're going to recognize our youth uh, wrestlers. So it's a pretty big night for them guys as well. Now, Coach, uh, your team last took to the mat in the Doan Ford Barnesville Invitational. You got a third place out of Wyatt Shaw and fifths from Ryan Jackson and Thane Mahaffey. How, will you, how do you think those guys will build upon that performance now here in a dual environment? Um, no, the, all three of them guys are ready to go. Uh, actually, the whole team's ready to go. I mean, they they're they're pretty up and you know going for this this dual meet against Indian Valley. You know, they beat us the last three years, uh, three out of the four years, and you know it's time to get some revenge back. Uh, the guys are really looking forward to it. So, and coach, uh, what do you feel is your team's biggest strength as a collective group when you're going up against a tough Indian Valley team like this? Uh, I mean, the biggest thing is for a big dual meet win or dual meet like this. Uh, the team's got to stay together. I mean, they got to they got to push for one another. You know, bonus points are crucial in a match like this. I mean, it's going to be down to the wire. You know, who gets the most falls or, you know, most technical falls or most uh, major decisions. It all is going to come down to bonus points. And uh, I think our guys are ready to go, and we'll see here in a couple hours. So, awesome, coach. Well, thank you so much, and good luck to you guys. Yeah. Thank you too. That was head coach Kyle Warner for the Claymont Mustangs. Coming up, we will get action started here from Claymont High School. That segment brought to you by Ron's Heating and Cooling. Big Z Sports is back after this. When struggles seem too tough, when sickness takes a hold, when cancer picks a fight, when baby's on its way, when life throws you a curveball, we've got you. With nearly 130 years in your backyard, Altman knows you and knows your community better than anyone. We're your neighbors, your friends, your family, and we want you to be the healthiest you can be. Altman, we are ready. We've got you. Hi, I'm Zach Motice with the Tuscross Insurance Agency. For all your auto, home, farm, and business insurance needs, contact our team at the Tuscross Insurance Agency or stop in and see us at one of our three locations in Sugar Creek, Strasburg, and downtown New Philadelphia, providing excellent service to the Tuscross Valley since 1885. Everyone here at the Tuscross Insurance Agency would like to wish all area athletes and teams good luck this fall. This is RJ Jacobs from DAC Vitamins and Minerals. Did you know that DAC Vitamins and Minerals has more than 40 proven equine supplements that include daily multivitamins, joint, digestion, reproduction and fertility, calming, and many other specialty products? DAC also carries a complete line of livestock products called DAC Show Contender. Feed DAC Vitamins and Minerals to get the competitive edge in the show pen. We've been feeding champions since 1983. Claymont High School here. Dual meet time between Claymont and Indian Valley. At least we will be having that coming up here shortly as middle school getting all their uh, competitions wrapped up here. And I, I got to tell you guys, anybody listening or watching right now, how uh, 
a wealth of knowledge that has been sitting beside <laughs> Travis Poland as he's telling me all the things that are going on here uh, between these two sides. Always, uh, always great to get that insight. Man, I got to tell you, Travis, it's for people who might just think it's just two guys slamming into each other on a mat. It's crazy how many intricacies go into this. Oh yeah, there there's so much technique involved. You know, the difference in a win or a loss could be where you have your hand six inches. You know, you you have your hand six inches too high mm. up on a guy's leg. You're not going to score the takedown. You put it where it belongs. You're going to score takedowns all day long. You know, uh, uh, we're we're just sitting here enjoying this junior high match, and you see some some things kids need to clean up, and that's the, the point of the junior high is that you know to, to get them out there, to get this exposed, and to get the uh, uh, the kids the opportunity to uh, to clean up these mistakes. They put their butts on the mat or get their heads down. There's a lot of technique involved, and and, and it's really an evolving sport. Um, what was popular or what was hit ten years ago isn't as hit as frequently today. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, um, it, it does go in cycles. So what we've seen 10 years ago and another 10 years is going to be popular again. But uh, 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 the, the amount of time and work and effort it takes from these guys to truly learn the sport is, is really phenomenal. So if you're not familiar with what you're seeing in a wrestling match, um, you're, you're watching some of these kids, some of these little guys even, you know, they, some of them have 10 years experience. You know, it's 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 been their lifetime learning to do it. And that's what's kind of crazy to me when I think about this, because you think about other sports that you participate in, and, you know, for baseball you go to the batting cages right. maybe, and you, or you get some just uh, hitting off the tee to learn something. For basketball, you practice some shots. You find a hoop and you do it. For football, maybe if you're a quarterback, you work on some out routes, you work on your timing. I feel like wrestling, it's one of those <laughs> sports where, you know, you can work on it, but, man, that's got to be a grind and a gruel to work on that. And it's, it, it's a tough, tough sport that you really have to be ready to dedicate so much time to. It, it really is a tough sport. It's the greatest sport in the world. It truly is. I, I'm biased as can be about this. This is the greatest <laughs> We'll let you be sport. biased on that. That's all right. <laughs> it is the greatest sport in the world. And, and uh, uh, you know, personally, I, I watch these kids, and the ones who really put the time and effort in, once you've survived going through high school wrestling, once you've survived going through college wrestling, you've gone through tough times. You know, whether it's it's the, the individual season, because there's the ebbs and flows and the ups and downs of the season where you've got your high points and low points. Same thing with your entire career. But you learn how to deal with tough times. You learn to deal with adversity. It's stuff that's going to, going to transfer later on in life. Your job is not always going to be easy. Your marriage is not going to be easy. God knows parenting is tough. It it. it, it it's not a job for them for the week. So, uh, uh, you know, just my personal unbiased opinion. <laughs> I think this is the greatest sport ever, and it's it's a, it, it teaches kids how to handle tough situations because every day is tough. Every time you get step on that mat, it's tough. Well, I always have a great appreciation for the people who are around this sport, strictly for the fact of it. Just seems everybody is so locked in, everybody is so dedicated to it, which sometimes is is sometimes lacking in in other athletics. I feel like it can be potentially, but you know the great thing about uh, being around here and being able to do uh, partnerships with Big Z Sports and the IVC for broadcasting uh, various games now onto wrestling. Obviously, I mean it seems like all these communities have such great dedication. Everybody buys into the program. Uh, throughout, and that's always wonderful to see, and that's where it all starts, you know, not to ramble on too much just no, about, yeah. you know, the sport itself, but uh, we are just waiting to uh, get the first matches underway here. Of course, we do believe those will be coming up. We said 7 o'clock, still got a few yeah, things to roll we got, through. We got, we got some warm-ups to roll exactly. through. We are looking at another good 20 minutes at least. I mean, who knows how many matches. I see a couple boys standing up here, middle school boys mm -hmm. that are getting ready to wrestle. Um, Indian Valley is going to have their warm-up. Claymont will have their warm-up. Mm -hmm. uh, we may be closer to a half hour before we, we actually uh, uh, toe the line. Well, and also we have that uh, youth night, the appreciation yes. coming up for yes. them. And Now, tell me a little bit about uh, starting off at the youth level, because you said like some of these little guys are out here right now. Right. Um, we'll call them, I don't know, underclassmen, but it's youth wrestling. Right, right. Uh, and you said you could have 10 years of experience. Yes. I mean, this is something when you could start pretty much – as early as you could probably put the headgear on. You, you can start as early. you got to watch it. This is a, a sport that can burn kids out. Mm -hmm. um, they did a study on it, and they found out it's roughly 70 to 80% of youth wrestlers will burn out. It is, it, it's tough. It's tough. They go home from school, and they're ready to go home. They're ready. They've been at school all day. They're, they're ready to just hang out, be, be kids. And then you eat dinner, you get them dressed, and you come back in for an hour and a half of, of somebody trying to shove your face down in the mat, or, or you get a black eye, a bloody nose. You're tired. You're hot, and 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 it, it's it's a tough thing to do. So you really got to watch 
Um, I, I would I would argue these days um, the quality of wrestling is up. The quantity is down. Mm. Um, we're, we're seeing some real high-level wrestling at young ages. Um, but it's tough to field a dual team these days. And, and it's tough to win a dual match if you can't field an entire team. And, you know, a, 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 a forfeit is worth six points. So you're not going to win if, if you go out there and give up two or three forfeits. You're down 18 nothing. And for, uh, for opponents in that situation, you know, when they come out here, they walk out to the mat, they're ready to go. But unfortunately, they look across, they have no opponent, it's going to be a forfeit. That's going to be good defeating for them, too. They've been putting in all this work just to end up uh, walking out on the mat for five seconds, then having to go home. Yeah, there's no fun in that. You know, the, the, you, you train, you work, you spend all that time sweating and bleeding. Cutting weight's a whole, you know, we could sit here and talk <laughs> no for, for a half hour on cutting weight pretty easy. You know, you do all that to not have a match. The match is the reward. The match is the payoff in the end. Um, you'll, you'll grind for days and days on that mat. And so, yeah, it, it's disappointing to kids. I, I don't know if Claymont has any or any Valley actually has any forfeits. Looks like any Valley is going to have one somewhere along the line here. Mm -hmm. They're going to have a forfeit. So, you know, uh, we'll, we'll see how Claymont plays that, plays that. And I would assume everybody watching right now probably is well aware of what you're talking about there. But for just in case for people who aren't aware, what would be your circumstances and ended up having to forfeit, just not having a kid available at the weight? That, that's pretty much it. If you don't have a kid available, whether you don't have a human being that weighs that much, <laughs> um, which, which you see a lot of times at the lightweights, um, you know, 106 pounds, 113 pounds, you might only be able to get one kid out. and There's two weight classes there, so you're going to have to give it up. Injury are are pretty uh, pretty common here um, uh, in, in wrestling. They happen. So we doing all right? <laughs> As we get a smile from Adam Swesky. Adam Swesky is here with Big Z Sports as well. See, so he, probably taking some pictures and stuff like that. On uh, taking some pictures and doing our social media work tonight. I'm sure he'll get so, a few things up for anybody who's interested. He is now. Uh, he is now. Maybe I just volunteer. That's a voluntold. I don't know if you've ever heard of that <laughs> yeah. before. But, uh, you know, I, I am also uh, curious, too, as we're talking about uh, for these sides, you know, we could still call it early season naturally. And as I think you mentioned, you know, you don't have a ton of dual meets in right. terms of throughout the season. It's a lot of uh, other tournaments, invitationals, and things like that. How, what do you take away from whenever we talk about this kind of much smaller scenario or much smaller kind of venue when it's just one team versus one team as opposed to these 25 team tournaments? This is, this is where the action's at. Mm -hmm. Personally, I, I, there's nothing better than a dual match, than, than one team wrestling another. You know who this is. With, with Claymont and Indian Valley, we're, we're separated by uh, one imaginary line, actually. It's up over the hill, it, basically. It I yeah. think to get here, I think you might travel through Indian Valley territory. Mm -hmm. Actually, I know you do because mm -hmm. I follow an Indian Valley bus mm -hmm. at school every day <laughs> in order to get to the high school. So you, you know, we are right on top of each other. These kids know each other. This isn't this isn't the '90s and the '80s where where kids didn't know each other, where they didn't communicate each other. This is this is 2022 where where they all have each other's Snapchats, they have each other's you know TikToks and and whatnot. Welcome they to all, the age of social media. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> There's no privacy, which which, you know, again, we could spend another half hour <laughs> on that. I cannot imagine how, how much that's got to stink to be addicted to social media and, and, and have no privacy in your oh, life. Oh, boy. So, uh, I, have no, I have known to talk because I have the social media platforms, but most of that, you know, for work, always right, connecting right, people. That is, right. that is a positive we could go with that. Just, you know, end up seeing all these people who do get to end up uh, see maybe the results of a match and stuff. But I know exactly what you're saying Oh, yeah, that. no, and, and I follow you guys, too. Yeah. I love following WTUZ. Love, love seeing what you guys put out there. And, and, and be honest, we really appreciate you guys showing up tonight. As, as a fan of wrestling, someone mm. who loves this sport, um, it, we want to see it grow. We want to see it grow locally. We want to see it grow nationally. There, there was a problem a couple years ago where they talked about taking out of the Olympics. Mm -hmm. um, Dan Gable, like the godfather of, of wrestling, went to bat. He went to USA Wrestling. He went to the U.S. Olympic Committee and said, there's no way you can take this out. He, he, he led the charge. It was, uh, it was actually really impressive what he did in order to save wrestling, but we can't have that ever happen again. Well, that was, that was kind of crazy because my wife is a huge Olympic fan, but, uh, and, and, you know, I, I think I mentioned you off air, but uh, my introduction to really to wrestling, I wasn't really followed it, didn't participate in high school, but it was when I went down to college. And it was amazing to me whenever we're talking about, as you mentioned, it's like the oldest sport in the yep. world. How, yes. in the, how in the world could you do that? But thankfully we uh, still get to see that Olympic uh, wrestling going on every single year. Yeah. every single time the Olympics rolls around. And, you know, for these kids, 
whenever we talk about other sports, you might see professional leagues, you might see you know NFL, MLB, NBA, stuff like that. I'd have to imagine for any of these kids who want to see it extend much further on past high school and stuff, that's kind of where you want to end up being yeah. on Team USA one day. Oh, yeah. And, and you talk about elite. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I mean, if you're in swimming, they, how many different events do they have in swimming? I, I don't even know between the 100 it's a lot. and the two. <laughs> oh, good Lord, you can sit here. We've all watched it. So uh, there, there's a lot. In Olympic wrestling, there are six freestyle spots and there are six Greco spots, mm-hmm. which are completely, you know, they're, they're, they're versions of wrestling. Our, our version here is closer to the version of freestyle. Ooh, and uh, um, now correct me if I'm wrong, and this is going to happen a lot tonight when I ask him questions, everyone, because he's the expert. I am not. <laughs> is it closer to a folk style type? This wrestling? is folk style. Okay, it this is. This is 100. See, there folk you go. Style. I just yes. showed you how much yeah. I really end up knowing. But okay, I got you now. Yeah, no, this is folk style wrestling. This is this is old traditional. Um, you know, there are some real. I, I don't even know how to say it. There are major differences. But you still, the fundamentals are still the same. Mm-hmm. You're still looking for takedowns. Wrestling's about two things. You know, it's it's about position and it's about control. It's about those two things. If you are in good position, you can maintain control. That's what you're trying to do during the entire match. So uh, that's that's folk style wrestling. Now, if you want to move on to the Olympics, that's great. If you ever wrestle freestyle and if you've never wrestled it before, that's a whole that's a whole nother ball game. <laughs> You just expose the guys back to the mat, and it's two versus versus. Uh, uh, you know, here you actually have to to get a, a count. You have to be there a prolonged period of time between two and four seconds in order to, to score some points. Well, Travis Poland, I always appreciate the uh, insight you've given us so far in this one. We'll go ahead and take another uh, quick timeout, come back here, and uh, as we still await tonight's start of varsity action, of course, again, as a reminder, Youth Night uh, is going to be going on, so we're going to be honoring some youth wrestlers here and uh, for their dedication and everything. So, again, be sure to stay tuned as we will be coming back for tonight's coverage. Of course, a big thank you, by the way, to the Eurexville Eagles for helping make this oh, yeah. entire thing possible tonight, and it uh, kind of adds on to how much uh, wrestling means in this Twin City community, and of course, just over the hill in Janayton. Yes, yes, we gotta we gotta give them a big shout out and a big thank you to me. You know, there's there's people. I'm gonna tell you that if if uh, if they know about it, there's people all over the United States that are gonna listen to this because there's former Claymont wrestlers. Mm-hmm. I'm sure, assuming there's former Indian Valley wrestlers that are gonna want to hear this. I know we have a few in the Army that are that would love to to know about this from from way back in the day. I saw uh, actually saw a, a serviceman we have here right now, Lane Peters, just got home from uh, Poland. He was over in Eastern Europe. So he's, he's here with us. But anyway, thank you to the Eagles for, for doing this. Thank you to WTZ for doing this for us. And a big thank you to Ron's Heating and Cooling oh, as yes. well, who are helping bring it, this coverage tonight. Be sure to stay tuned with Big Z Sports. We'll be having dual match action coming up shortly. We'll be back after this. Ron's Heating and Cooling in Denison has been serving this great area since 1977. At Ron's, no matter what your needs, they can handle it. From heating and cooling to standby Generac generators, water heaters, tankless water heaters, mobile home equipment, duct cleaning, and 24-hour no-heat service. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you have to do is call 740-922-5252. Ron's Heating and Cooling proudly supports high school sports and would like to wish best of luck to all local athletes participating this season. Jackie P. Photography understands there are many life moments that occur, and having pictures of those events is very important and shouldn't break the bank to have them. Jackie P. offers quality professional photography at an affordable price and offers services for weddings, engagements, family, senior pictures, plus any other special time in your life. To see just what Jackie P. can offer, find her on Facebook and follow on Instagram. To capture those special moments at an affordable price, visit JackiePPhotography.com. Are you looking for the perfect destination for a guy's hunting trip or simply want to get a practice shoot in? Well, Bullseye Pheasant and Duck Hunting gives you just that. Located on 183 acres outside of Eurexville, Bullseye offers pheasant, chukar, quail, and duck hunting in an authentic, fast-paced hunt from the comfort of a duck blind. To learn more, find Bullseye Pheasant and Duck Hunting on Facebook or give them a call at 740-922-5633. 
When heading to any event and you're in the McCulley Drive, Eurexville area, the place to stop is 922 Drive Through for all of your on the go needs. They carry drinks, snacks, and all the necessities. With convenient hours of 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. Friday and Saturday, and 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Sunday, 922 Drive Through is there for you. Also serving your needs at the shortstop location in Eurexville and CJ's Drive Through in Denison. Ron's Heating and Cooling in Denison has been serving this great area since 1977. At Ron's, no matter what your needs, they can handle it. From heating and cooling to standby Generac generators, water heaters, tankless water heaters, mobile home equipment, duct cleaning, and 24-hour no-heat service. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you have to do is call 740-922-5252. Ron's Heating and Cooling proudly supports high school sports and would like to wish best of luck to all local athletes participating this season. We are the Tyson family and we would like to invite you to come visit your Little Caesars Pizza on West High Avenue in New Philadelphia. Looking for a quick and affordable lunch that's ready when you are? Try the lunch combo at Little Caesars Pizza. For just $5, you'll get half of a deep, deep dish pepperoni and cheese pizza plus a 20-ounce Pepsi product. This tasty $5 combo is available daily 11 until 2. And if you miss lunch, you can still take home the deep, deep dish Little Caesars Pizza all day, every day for only 8 bucks. Big taste, small price. Come visit us at Little Caesars Pizza on West High Avenue, New Philadelphia. Make your dream home a reality with Designer Stone Company in Port Washington. They offer granite and quartz countertops, custom made to fit your home. Explore Designer Showroom to discover the possibilities for your new kitchen or bath. The Designer Stone Company is on Facebook and conveniently located on State Route 36 in Port Washington. Back to Claymont High School, awaiting dual match action between the Claymont Mustangs, Indian Valley Braves, Nick McWilliams, Travis Poland here for all your coverage tonight as we're still awaiting. Uh, I do believe this is the final match before we start getting ready for the tonight's action at the varsity level. And uh, we, as we mentioned, with uh, Youth Night also coming up here. I take that back, Adam Swesky, uh, signaling with the one more thing. That's always what I find interesting, Travis, too, with wrestling. You know, we, we talk about some of the other coverage we do, and this is the first foray into wrestling Big Z Sports has done. Uh, you know, it feels kind of segmented in terms of other sports, like everything kind of runs on this scenario. You know, with wrestling, it's it, it really does change quite a bit, as you mentioned, with the forfeits, and uh, you don't know how sometimes how long matches are going to go. It could be over in 10 seconds, or it's going to go the full length. It, it literally could. You, you do not know that at any time a match can be ended, you know, and, and um, so you don't know. You, you really don't know. So you just pack it, you know, pack a lunch and expect a long night and hope for a quick one and, and your side wins. <laughs> now, for, for uh, kids who go out there, you know, when you're trying to teach them on what exactly uh, you're looking for, maybe the tendencies of somebody you're going up against, is it sometimes difficult to teach them to be that aggressive self that they can be in terms of look for these openings, but also at the same time keeping their head and not being too aggressive and opening themselves up for potentially having the match end on them? Well, you know, you're in, it, 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 with wrestling, really, the best defense you can have is your offense. Mm. You have to keep going. You have to move forward. You have to attack your attacks. You know, you can't leave yourself in the open. Now, there's a handful of kids you have to be wary of. Tonight, we're going to see Wyatt Shaw wrestle. Not many people want to go down on Wyatt. Wyatt Shaw is arguably one of the best cradlers in claim on history. You just And a big kid at 215, oh, I, from he, what yes, I saw. Yes. Now, he's going to have a heck of a matchup tonight, and we'll get to that later, I'm sure. But, uh, uh, you, you know, so that, that's just, you know, a little bit of, uh, of sense there is you don't want to go down because Wyatt's arms are so long. His cradle is just absolutely devastating. I've seen him down points and slap a cradle on a kid, and, and, and it's over just as quick as it, as it started. So, you know, you, you have to stay on your offense. You have to get at what you do. There's going to be openings. Every guy's going to make a mistake. At some point, in order to engage, they're going to make mistakes. The, best, you know, the safest place you can be is on your feet, mm -hmm. in your stance, and moving your feet. That's the safest place. But you got to get out of it. Everybody's got to get out of it. So who makes the first mistake? And then do you have the, 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 the wherewithal, the guts sometimes, to even, to even uh, uh, attack? These kids, you look around. There, there's 1,000 people here right now. Everybody sees their face. Mm -hmm. You can't hide. You can't, you know, football. 
you get beat, you got a face mask you can hide behind. You, you're 50 yards away from everybody. You know, there's no action right on top of you. How close is this mat? What is that? 10 feet, 10 feet 20, maybe, 10, 20 if feet that, yeah. to where that's at. These, these people can see everything that's going on. So, you know, it, it takes guts sometimes to just let it fly. Mm -hmm. Go out, attack the man. You know, that, that's what you have to do. Ooh. And, uh, again, big thank you to the Uricksville Eagles as we get a, another pin here. There is, I'm going to hear Travis's reactions throughout the night. I'm definitely going to be looking over to him when something <laughs> happens. Like, all right, run me through how, that, uh, how exactly that happened. But, he just got pancaked. He got extended, you know. Yeah, yeah. Positioning, positioning. Everything's about positioning here. Well, and a big thank you again to the Uricksville Eagles, as we mentioned. Uh, the, the big driving force behind bringing this broadcast to you, and, of course, to Ron's Heating and Cooling as well. You know, they wanted to see some uh, Claymont Indian Valley uh, wrestling action on Big Z Sports, and sure enough, we're able to provide that. And I'm interested for your other insights on this, uh, Travis, as, you know, we're, we're getting set again for uh, these varsity-level matches and, you know, running through all these different weights. As we see these kids kind of moseying around well beforehand, you know, we see them for both Claymont and Indian Valley, the ones who are getting ready for their matches and uh, just kind of trying to calm those nerves. What do you tell a wrestler, an athlete, to make sure that they are ready to go and they can kind of get that nervousness out? You want a little bit of nervousness, yeah. but oh, you still yes. want them focused. Yes. Yeah, well, you know, th th to get them ready, really, you uh, we always tell them, uh, you know how like a racehorse, racehorse mm -hmm. is, is absolutely covered in, in sweat. We, we want our kids going out covered in sweat. Get moving. Get some activity. You bang two hours a night at practice. You're not going to get tired running back and forth a little bit. You're mm -hmm. going to be fine. Get a sweat going. They're going to come out here, and, and after this match is over and after the youth little youth thing they're doing, uh, they're, they're going to come out and they're going to do a warm-up. So that gets the initial nerves out of you. You know, this 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 facility is amazing. One of the few places in the state that uses uh, this map. Oh, I land. love that. I Isn't love that. that right? yeah. We held a tournament last year. Um, we were still dealing with the effects of COVID. Mm -hmm. And uh, Top Gun, big alliance tournament, ended up getting shut down. So we threw a tournament together real quick, and we wrestled the finals uh, underneath the mat lamp. You should have heard the people go crazy. They <laughs> they had never seen anything like it. was like they saw a three-legged three -legged horse or something. They, they were amazed by it. And so it's a great facility, but it's intimidating. You walk in here, you've never done this before. It's intimidating. These people sudden, yep, there goes all the lights. <laughs> you, uh, we were just talking about the intimidating yeah. one light, and now we've got all of them now, back. Look at this. Now, it's like you're in your cafeteria. So, <laughs> but, but, no, it's it's always great to see. I, I love the idea of that singular spotlight. And yeah. Of course, all the side lights going out. Uh, my time covering college wrestling, you know, seeing some of those venues that yes. uh, when they bring all the lights down with these 10,000 uh, seat places with just a single light on the center. And it goes back to that idea is what we talked about, nowhere to run and hide. Right. And I think that's got to be a point of pride, too, for a lot of these kids who do participate, you know. It's just them out there, and, yes. and that's got to be a great feeling for them. In, in, in uh, triumph and, of course, in defeat, it's a terrible feeling. Yes. But you do have, especially in a sport like this, you do have to lose some in order to learn. There's no higher high and there's no lower low. You know, it's, it, is, it is both ends of the spectrum here uh, in a wrestling match. So you got to give all these kids credit. You know, win or lose, it is hard to do. It is tough. It is tough from the time you, you, you know, leave school and go to practice till you're done with practice and you're cutting weight, and then you get out here. I'm going to move that over a little bit. I don't think they got it centered quite right. Gotta get the hey, look, look, we got the, like the youngest member over here uh, helping out gonna, as well. I got a, got a, got a hits an Indian Valley boy just grabbing hold and move. He's Listen, I know where it's going, guys. We know where it's going. <laughs> as we are going to get that, uh, that youth night recognition uh, going on here. And that, that's... Uh, <laughs> It's great to see again, as we've mentioned, with the uh, both sides really being filled up here as they're going to be uh, excited to go and see this uh, action happening. And I, I, you know I, who you, likes youth night? Who's that? Athletic directors. Really? They love youth night, yeah. Look at all the people here. True. You know? True. You know? In, in, in virtually every school, because this is a public school, mm -hmm. every school they got the big two, football, and boys basketball mm -hmm. have to pay for everything. Mm -hmm. So you got to milk as much out as you can. Here at Claymont, we've been fortunate to, with, with all the success, especially the years of Coach Token, and I, I can't give that guy enough credit. Um, it's almost have, unfathomable sometimes the numbers oh that gosh. those teams put up. Oh, my gosh. You know, to have been a part of it, to have wrestled for him, mm -hmm. you know, uh, he, he was really something what he could do. I mean, such a visionary, such a, a forward thinker that – that most people couldn't keep up with him. I've seen that guy do some things that people scratched their head and had no idea what he was even up to. And <laughs> he, he, was, he was three steps ahead of everybody. 
So, you know, yeah, he was wrestling a lake one time. This is no lie. Wrestling lake one time. His kid was getting beat by 14. He, 15 points is a tech fall. Mm -hmm. So his kid is losing by 14. He chose top, and then he kicked the kid out to give him one point. And everybody was yelling like, oh, my gosh, what's he doing? What's he doing? Well, he, well that saved him a team point, so he mm -hmm. didn't get pinned. Ended up winning that match by a, by one point. He <laughs> he 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 thought three steps ahead of everybody. So you know, it, with Claymont, you look around at these guys, these youth coaches, Claymont wrestler, Claymont, mm -hmm. Claymont, the the head coach, uh, uh, Kyle, Claymont wrestler, mm -hmm. Dustin's Claymont. All the, all these guys came from that tree, trying to trying to follow that that lineage, and, and it's a difficult. <laughs> trust me, I, I, I it's it's a difficult uh, road to hoe, but. Uh, yeah, uh, we we've got a great crowd here tonight, and 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 these little kids are fun to watch. Have you? I don't know if you've ever got I to ha watch. I a have youth not actually, so I'm I'm really looking forward to it now. Yeah, they uh, they're fun. You know, you get you get the little ones. And, you know, you start with these little ones, and they're just they're real little. They're real cute, and they're smiling away, mm. and they don't know if they're winning or losing. They don't really <laughs> care. And hopefully, mom and dad take them out and get them ice cream when it's all said and done, and and because uh, that's how you you get kids to love the sport is to support them. So. Um, uh, but they're, they, they do. They, uh, uh, they, these coaches, these youth coaches, they do a tremendous job. And that's, I'm happy you brought that up about the love of the sport because that's definitely something I wanted to make mention. I know we've kind of talked about it a bit, but that's where it's always got to start, especially in a sport like this, is at the youth level. And I think uh, I know Claymont for certain has a, a good youth program, uh, of course, when it comes to their wrestlers. But it seems like a lot of our area schools, a lot of our area districts have that same thing, you know. Uh, it's all that support for their youth wrestling. Yeah. Yeah, we'll we'll get we'll get a lot of support for them. We have these guys volunteer, you know, Saul Peters, Chad Henry, and, and Bub Wallace, Jason Edwards, Caden. I could I could go down the line. They don't make a dime doing this. This yeah. is, this is because they love the sport. They love the sport. They love the community. And they love the kids. I know Indian Valley's got the exact same thing going on, where they don't make any money doing it. They're not mm -hmm. doing it for the money. They're doing it because of the sport because they love it. Got to love the camaraderie when it comes to that. As we are. Almost set for the youth night recognitions here as all the youth wrestlers for Claymont gathered over there along the uh, the baseline. It sounds weird to say, not uh, bes beside even, the mat. We don't even talk that. We don't, <laughs> don't bring up that language here. This, this isn't a basketball court right now. It is a wrestling baseline. mat, and that's it. We, we, we are not going to refer to it as that. It's actually, I take that back. We are going to have the varsity come out with their uh, quick warm-up here to start. But as they uh, run around here. And uh, you were giving me some uh, statistics there, Travis. And, again, this is for the benefit of people like me who are not overly versed in wrestling and also maybe anyone who's listening who doesn't know themselves. Um, we were making mention, you said the 28-foot circle. Right. And, you know, that might sound like, oh, that's plenty of room. But everything in a circle, 28 feet all around you. Let's say you're a wrestler who's six foot tall. You're against a guy who's six foot tall. Both of you locked up could be about 12 feet or so. So there's really no room to go. No, no. You you have to wrestle inside that. And, you know, you get 28 foot circle. Actually, ideally, the, the inner circle is 10 feet. Mm -hmm. That's that's a 10 foot circle. So ideally, you're going to stay right there. You know, if you get a guy on his back, you don't want to be messing around this edge line. Mm -hmm. You want right there in the middle. And you better have some confidence in yourself. You can put him on his back. So the good wrestlers want to stay right there. You can always usually tell who's good it, by, by who's trying to stay in the 10 foot. <laughs> and the guy who's not as good, he's working that edge line. Well, I, I almost equate it back to if, you know, you watch boxing yes, or you absolutely. watch MMA, they talk about ring command, you know, going around, and who's the guy who wants to stay in the middle, who's the guy who wants to bring the fight to somebody else. So it's the same, same thing, right? Right, absolutely. Definitely where it comes from. Well, as we uh, continue to wait here for our uh, youth wrestling night and for tonight's action between Claymont and Indian Valley, again, uh, kind of a, a touch, uh, brushing back some of the things that we talked with the uh, both head coaches about. You know, for a head coach, Dusty Braun, for Indian Valley, I said we um, last saw him with the Riverside Rumble. They pretty much dominated the field in that one at Invitational. Um, and about a 100-point victory overall over the uh, second-place team, and it's escaping me now who was the second-place team in that one. But, you know, a win like that in kind of dominating fashion, a dominating team win like that, can that give you uh, the proper momentum here as we uh, inch closer, I guess you could say, to tournament time? Yeah. Yeah, you know, it, it, it momentum's everything. Momentum is huge in this. This this is a sport of human beings, and and they feel the emotion. They feel it. Um, you know, especially in a dual match here, is is you're going to see this momentum, where if if uh, if it sways one way or another, it can get a ball rolling and it'll snowball right down a hill, and one side can take over and absolutely dominate. Now, on paper, this match is pretty good. It it is. This is a good match. Um, both sides have a shot of winning, but they neither one can afford to get the momentum rolling against them. 
It's it's one of those uh, any given night kind of yes, statements almost. Absolutely. As for Claymont, uh, you know, we, we uh, talked about it, I think, a little bit before, but the Doan Ford Barnesville Invitational. Individual placers there, uh, third place for Wyatt Shaw. They had fifths from Ryan Jackson and Thane Mahaffey. Um, you know, again, it, they didn't end up ultimately winning that. I don't think they – I forget how many kids they actually took to uh, that invitation. Yeah, they've got a few kids out right now. So, so they're, 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 they're down. They're without some. And, and that's got to be difficult because this is a sport where you deal with those injuries. But for the Mustangs here, uh, with that scenario, if you still got a couple kids out, I know you mentioned that before we started the broadcast, they were going to have a couple kids who were likely going to be out in this one. It, it's a difficult thing, but also kind of gives you a, probably a pretty good opportunity to know what you're getting from the rest of your team who's definitely going to have to step up. You cannot replace varsity experience. You can't buy that anywhere. So, you know, it's going to give some of these young guys an opportunity. Uh, I see I see a couple of the – I see three of the walking wounded right here now. <laughs> <laughs> you, you got Elijah Parrish here. He's got a he's got a leg injury. Uh, Elijah Parrish was a state qualifier last year for Claymont. Had a One, great season. Had, if I'm had a great season. Yeah. I tell you, he did it on a broken foot. Yeah. Um, that's tough. You know, if you're on your feet the entire time, he did it on a broken foot and he qualified for the state tournament. So, you know, went down there, got some experience. I know he's planning on a big year this year. Hopefully this leg injury doesn't keep him down very long. He's able to heal from that. Beside him, you've got Nolan McMorrow. He's out too. He, the very first uh, tournament of the season, they wrestled with the Solon Comet Classic, and uh, he dinged up his leg. So mm. beside him, you got Cole McCabe. Cole McCabe was a first-year wrestler last year. He's a heavyweight. Um, uh, qualified for the district tournament. He had never put on a pair of wrestling shoes till last year. <laughs> qualified for the district tournament, which which was you know tough. It was tough, you know, and he did a great job doing it. So, but he uh, in the scrimmage blew out his ACL. So, oh. uh, I mean, just absolutely killer, devastating injuries. So uh, tonight, you know, the Mustangs are going to get an opportunity with with some of their young guys to go up against this veteran Indian Valley team. And it's interesting you said he had never actually uh, laced them up before nope. he came out on the mat until right. last year. And this, I feel like this is not a sport where very <laughs> often you get the beginner's luck, so right. to speak. Right. No, it, it, it takes a lot of training. So, you know, the like you call it the beginner's luck, it, it typically doesn't exist in this sport. Guys who don't know how to wrestle go out on the mat, and you see. You, you can pick them out of a lineup. So, uh, uh, you know, for Cole, what he did last year, Great work. Um, uh, it's devastating, though, to lose him like that for the year because that's obviously a year-long injury. He's out. Yeah, i got to be very unfortunate with that. But um, looking ahead now, I guess, uh, for the time of the year for both of these teams, really, we're in late December. Obviously, these kids going off on holiday breaks and uh, going to be coming back into school after that, getting back into the wrestling room. i got to ask, with your experience as a coach, did you ever have to talk to your kids about, like, look, I want you to enjoy your, uh, your Christmas <laughs> period, but please take it easy on the food and the sweets yes. and stuff? Yes. Oh, goodness, yes. Oh. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, they, they, uh, they get hungry. You know, they're, <laughs> they're boys. They, they are a, a walking pit that you can just shovel food in, or they, they tend to. And, and after they've been cutting weight, truth be told, they're not even hungry. They just eat because they want to eat. They don't eat because they're hungry. And, and some of them will gain 20 pounds over, you know, Christmas break. The, the good thing is, I'm sure Indian Valley, and I know Claymont has wrestling over the break. So you can't balloon up too much. you you got to keep it It's under almost control. like that's by design. Yeah, oh, <laughs> imagine that. What a coincidence. A time when you could gain 20 pounds, they just happened to schedule a huge tournament. It, it just... Sometimes things work out, you know. You never know. It, you you got to hope that everything always works out, but it never quite seems it to work out that way. Out. In a perfect world, we'd always constantly get that. But, uh, you know, looking around here, waiting again for a youth night, I think they're about to get that underway. But, you know, other than the kids who are getting honored tonight with the youth night, I'm amazed always. It seems like wrestling is the sport that you get this too. You have all these young kids who are around, not necessarily just, you know, having fun, playing with each other off to the side who are kind of actively watching what's happening. Yes. It almost seems like it's just an innate uh, just interest in what they see going on. Yes, they, they do. They, they From the time they're little little kids, little boys, little girls, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They like to grab each other and throw each other around. They tend to do that, and hopefully they, they do it before they, they pick up a stick and whack each other. They, no, uh, use, use your hands, kids. Well, in certain ways, don't, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Don't start swinging at everybody, but uh, they're getting the uh, youth wrestlers walking out here as Casey Claxon getting it for Claxon Communications. But anyways, as we were saying, uh, you know, it, it, it's kind of amazing that you just get that innate 
desire almost to uh, participate in this, and the kids really gravitate to it early if they want to stick with it. They, they do. And, you know, and it's unfortunate that they have to make a decision at some point. some point, there's the decision. You come to that fork in the road, you're either a basketball player or you're a wrestler. You're one or the other. You mm-hmm. can't do do both. You know, look how much better this floor, this basketball floor looks with the wrestling mat on it. Doesn't it look better? <laughs> All of, everybody if this is how this floor is designed to be. <laughs> they need to somehow remove this basketball. Now, I, I see our head basketball coach, <laughs> Gary Watkins, over there. He's going to be mad I was at me. Say, I'm going to tell Coach Watkins uh, <laughs> to listen to this broadcast right here at this timestamp after he gets posted and say, hey, just so you know, uh, there's a certain high school teacher who might have had an interesting take <laughs> I on worked that. right beside him, and I've heard it for over 20 <laughs> years, and, and uh, we've, we've been giving each other a lot hard time over the years about this. Now, it is kind of an unfortunate thing, though, you know, having to choose sports. Choosing sports, period, is, is always one of those unfortunate things. I mean, it, it, uh, these kids will try to make it work. They've tried to make it work, but it is a difficult conflict. Yes. But as long as the kids are doing something that they enjoy, I think that's obviously going to be your biggest part. Some are going to gravitate to to basketball, some are gra- going to gravitate to wrestling, but uh, you know, I <laughs> I, I always find it uh, interesting too with the uh, the basketball courts getting the mat rolled out here. I always wondered, wondered, you know, in a school like uh, Claymont or another big uh, program. Maybe they'll get that wherever they have the retractable one where the floor moves to the side and here comes the mat out of the ground. Just, just That would be amazing. That would, <laughs> you know, I was watching uh, uh, Jimmy Stewart. It, it's a wonderful life. Yes, I was watching yes. that the other night, and there's that scene where uh-huh. the, the pool comes. So maybe they could do that, you know. <laughs> get rid of the stinking basketball floor. Just keep mats down year-round. <laughs> This that that is that that's the pinnacle of, of any school. <laughs> Actually, we could we could patent that, and I'm telling you, we could make some money. So, uh, oh, here we go. As we are gonna, I think, gonna get things underway here briefly between tonight's matchups. As the Claymont Mustangs gonna get their introduction here. Never never got to witness this yet. You've never seen this. Oh, oh. So here come the Mustangs come. out for tonight's matchup against the Indian Valley Braves. We'll have to see, obviously, uh, throughout the weight classes and stuff, we were talking about who was going to be the possible starters for both these sides, as we're not going to know up until everything gets started under the underway here, who's going to be participating, of course. But it's Travis. will be starting at 144 pounds tonight. This official Rocky Dusenberry. Appreciate, appreciate that, Travis. It says uh, Rocky Dusenberry getting our... Uh, starting line right up here, so, getting yes. where, what weight class we're going to be starting at. So 154, pounds. or 144, 44, yes. take that back. So that's going to be potentially a quite a big matchup to start things we'll see, off. We'll see who comes out here. I don't really know for sure who is wrestling for either side. We know this is this is uh, where, where if you look at the matchup, you're headed towards the thick of it, where the match is going to be decided. 150, 157 pounds. What's going to happen at those two matches? So... Uh, uh, we, we know any Valley's got some real good kids right in that area with uh, Quake Beatty, mm-hmm. tough kid. He's, had, he's weighed in at, at 444, so he could wrestle potentially 150 pounds if he wanted to. He could bump up there. So we'll see what happens. It's, it, it's going to be interesting. Coach Braun's going to have the, his game plan together, and, and a lot of things depend on something simple as the coin flip, which I don't know if you're how familiar you are with that, but you know whoever wins the coin flip, if you get choice first that period, you have to present your wrestler first. So got other co- the coaches can make their matchups based on, on how the coin flip is. It can dictate a match, something as simple as that. So it's almost like the psychological part of it. you got to almost think ahead. Oh, yes, yes, it is. Constantly got to be thinking ahead. So we'll see if maybe Claymont want to establish something early here. As we mentioned, that 144 matchup we will be getting things underway. Could be trying to set the tone early. But... That'll pretty much wrap up, I do believe, for the most part, our pregame coverage as we get ready for tonight's matches as Claymont out there on the mat warming up right now. Big Z Sports will go ahead and take a break, and we'll uh, compose ourselves, get ready to go before we finally get some wrestling action here from Eurexville. Don't go anywhere. We're back after this. Ron's Heating and Cooling in Denison has been serving this great area since 1977. At Ron's, no matter what your needs, they can handle it. From heating and cooling to standby Generac generators, water heaters, tankless water heaters, mobile home equipment, duct cleaning, and 24-hour no-heat service. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you have to do is call 740-922-5252. Ron's Heating and Cooling proudly supports high school sports and would like to wish best of luck to all local athletes participating this season when struggles seem too tough when sickness takes a hold when cancer picks a fight 
When baby's on its way. When life throws you a curveball. We've got you. With nearly 130 years in your backyard, Altman knows you and knows your community better than anyone. We're your neighbors, your friends, your family, and we want you to be the healthiest you can be. Altman, we are ready. We've got you. Hi, I'm Zach Motice with the Tuscross Insurance Agency. For all your auto, home, farm, and business insurance needs, contact our team at the Tuscross Insurance Agency or stop in and see us at one of our three locations in Sugar Creek, Strasburg, and downtown New Philadelphia, providing excellent service to the Tuscross Valley since 1885. Everyone here at the Tuscross Insurance Agency would like to wish all area athletes and teams good luck this fall. This is RJ Jacobs from DAC Vitamins and Minerals. Did you know that DAC Vitamins and Minerals has more than 40 proven equine supplements that include daily multivitamins, joint, digestion, reproduction and fertility, calming, and many other specialty products? DAC also carries a complete line of livestock products called DAC Show Contender. Feed DAC Vitamins and Minerals to get the competitive edge in the show pen. We've been feeding champions since 1983. Ron's Heating and Cooling in Denison has been serving this great area since 1977. At Ron's, no matter what your needs, they can handle it. From heating and cooling to standby Generac generators, water heaters, tankless water heaters, mobile home equipment, duct cleaning, and 24-hour no-heat service. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you have to do is call 740-922-5252. Ron's Heating and Cooling proudly supports high school sports and would like to wish best of luck to all local athletes participating this season. Jackie P. Photography understands there are many life moments that occur, and having pictures of those events is very important and shouldn't break the bank to have them. Jackie P. offers quality professional photography at an affordable price and offers services for weddings, engagements, family, senior pictures, plus any other special time in your life. To see just what Jackie P. can offer, find her on Facebook and follow on Instagram. To capture those special moments at an affordable price, visit JackiePPhotography.com. Are you looking for the perfect destination for a guy's hunting trip or simply want to get a practice shoot in? Well, Bullseye Pheasant and Duck Hunting gives you just that. Located on 183 acres outside of Eurexville, Bullseye offers pheasant, chukar, quail, and duck hunting in an authentic, fast-paced hunt from the comfort of a duck blind. To learn more, find Bullseye Pheasant and Duck Hunting on Facebook or give them a call at 740-922-5633. When heading to any event and you're in the McCulley Drive, Eurexville area, the place to stop is 922 drive Through for all of your on-the-go needs. They carry drinks, snacks, and all the necessities. With convenient hours of 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. Friday and Saturday, and 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Sunday, 922 drive Through is there for you. Also serving your needs at the shortstop location in Eurexville and CJ's drive Through in Denison. Ron's Heating and Cooling in Denison has been serving this great area since 1977. At Ron's, no matter what your needs, they can handle it. From heating and cooling to standby Generac generators, water heaters, tankless water heaters, mobile home equipment, duct cleaning, and 24-hour no-heat service. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you have to do is call 740-922-5252. Ron's Heating and Cooling proudly supports high school sports and would like to wish best of luck to all local athletes participating this season. We are the Tyson family and we would like to invite you to come visit your Little Caesars Pizza on West High Avenue in New Philadelphia. Looking for a quick and affordable lunch that's ready when you are? Try the lunch combo at Little Caesars Pizza. For just $5, you'll get half of a deep, deep dish pepperoni and cheese pizza plus a 20-ounce Pepsi product. This tasty $5 combo is available daily 11 until 2. And if you miss lunch, you can still take home the deep, deep dish Little Caesars Pizza all day, every day for only 8 bucks. Big taste, small price. Come visit us at Little Caesars 
Caesar's Pizza on West High Avenue near Philadelphia. To Claymont High School here is the wrestler introductions now coming on here as we uh, do know starting at 144 Quake Beatty for Indian Valley and a forfeit is going to be the start for the uh, for the Mustangs at 144. As uh, Travis, I, I think you you picked up something there as when they were doing some other introductions. I think. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I, oh, no, I, I thought I, you I, did. I was zoned out. No, there no, for you're a fine. I was, I was listening to the introductions here. I got no, It's going to be a chess match here right off the rip. Um, we'll see what happens here. So they're getting the introductions going on here. I guess, you know, foresight for me, I would have uh, waited to bring it back and we could have written down who was per competing for both these sides, but <laughs> that'll be all right. We'll 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 deal with it as we go. Oh, but, yeah. uh, well, they'll announce them here anyway. This is the Kinsey kid coming out of here, 75 or 90. This is at 190. It's hard to deny who Grady Kinsey is when he walks out there. Yeah, just he because is put together. <laughs> he is. He is. Not too many freshmen I know who end up uh, who who look like that. We know them from the uh, the football field, of course. Sure. But uh, you know, for Claymont, just seeing all these kids come out here as well, it's it's always amazing to me that you know you, you you get different guys at different weights, and they all you could say most of them will end up looking the same in terms of size and everything. But how often do you get these kids who they come out and you're thinking there is no way in the world you weigh 138 pounds? You are huge. <laughs> I know it has to happen, it, right? It does happen. It does happen. But, you know, uh, uh, they, they can get it down. You'd be surprised what a kid can get down. And, uh, there, there's a, a difference in losing weight and cutting weight, and typically what the wrestlers end up doing is cutting weight. They get it off for a couple minutes, and and they're good to go. You know, uh, the, it started with the NCAA a few years, or gosh, it's been 20 years ago now that that they, uh, they, they're trying to eliminate cutting weight yes, per se. Yes, I've you heard know, about that. They want... They want it done wisely. It was back in 1997. Uh, it was either two or three NCAA wrestlers died because they were mm -hmm. they were doing it poorly. They, right. they they just didn't do a good job, and so they've really tried to to eliminate that. I think they're really the only way you're ever going to truly eliminate that is is make them step on the scale right before they step on the mat. That's how you truly eliminate it. But we'll see how that all shakes out here. I know that it's, uh, it's, it's something they're still battling. And it does see uh, Leroy Stiegel will be wrestling at 126 yes. pounds for Indian Valley as they will forfeit at 120. So Ryan Jackson at 120 for uh, Claymont will be the one who uh, I, I guess you could say classify well, as the win, or how's that work? Well, we we gotta wait and see. We gotta oh, okay. wait and see what's going to happen gotcha. because there's an opportunity to bump there if they really want to. I gotcha. Okay. It's it's whatever. That's, that's why we appreciate having you here for this inside. Well, it's just a big chess match, you know. We're gonna see what happens here when when they go out and flip. So Coach Warner, I know, has got what he wants. Coach Braun's got what they want for who they want to present first. So the chess match begins. <laughs> it, it so to begins. Speak. It begins right now. Well, thank you so much again for tuning in tonight for tonight's live stream action of dual meet wrestling between Indian Valley and Claymont. Obviously, uh, your, uh, the Mustangs being the home team here in Eurexville have to feel uh, that they're going to want to come out and try to set the tone as early as possible with these uh, the first matches. Again, supposed to start at 144 pounds. So, uh, both sides. The captain's talking there in the uh, in the middle of the mat. As I'm going to end up screwing up and getting some of these uh, nomenclatures wrong that I'll be, I usually use for uh, the other sports. <laughs> but, um, you know, a big thank you again to the Eurexville Eagles and to Ron's Heating and Cooling for uh, helping us bring you this tonight and all you wrestling fans out there, wherever you are, we thank you so much for joining us. Uh, as you had mentioned in the pregame, too, uh, you know, there's going to be people from all over, really the state and almost everywhere who could be watching this right now just for all the alumni for both these great districts. I wouldn't blame them. I'd be tuning in if I was <laughs> if I lived in Arkansas right now. I'd be tuning in <laughs> WTUZ right now and watching this match. So we're going to see at 144 here who Indian Valley is going to send out um, to take the forfeit at 144 pounds. You have to see who... Uh, that's Quake. That looks like they're sending him out for the forfeit. So, and I do believe they're going to keep. Here's the thing: is they're going to keep 132 alive for Quake. If they end up bumping him up to 150, they're going to lose one, one, uh, 132. So they had to do that. So it goes back to that psychological thing, as we have been talking about, or really just smart <laughs> planning, I guess. Yes. Yes. So here we're going to have is this. This is Kinsey. This is Kinsey against uh, Trenton Cole. These are two freshmen here. They battled each other in junior high. Let's see how this ends up here. So Trenton Cole. in on a good shot. He's got to finish that. Oh, and he's on his back. Now, obviously, he, getting rolled over there. I mean, uh, I think it was two points there for uh, Indian two Valley. Back. And two back. Yes. And two back. So, 
Big move there already to start for Indian Valley. Trenton Cole finds himself behind. In this scenario, again, we talked about, you know, having your head Trenton's down on the mat, got to get it up. Yeah, Trenton's in a bad way right now. He's going to have to fight off his back. He's got a long time to go. That clock's not correct at 228. It's 128. He's got a long time. He's going to be heading for the out-of-bounds mark right now. You see him trying to reach over there, I'm guessing with the lag, but they are going to get the pin. So yep. Indian Valley starts off in a big way. Early pinfall here to get things going. So it's going to be 12-0 with that forfeit. 12-0, the Braves start things off there. So we're up to 157 now. For the Mustangs, you're going to have Thane Mahaffey. Really interesting story here. He's a senior, but he hasn't wrestled since uh, eighth grade. So he hasn't wrestled since wow. eighth grade. Yeah, he, so we got him back out. Good for him coming out and making some great memories here. He placed at Solon. He placed at Barnesville. Um, who do we have here for Indian Valley? At 157, what we were sent over by Coach Dusty Brown was Tristan Bryan, the junior. Yeah. So we'll see who can get the early upper hand. Thane's in on a good shot. Driving those hips forward, obviously trying to get him back on his uh, He's going to try and around. circle around here or come out in front. Now he's going to shear through the crotch, cover the hips, and that will be two. Almost effortless there from a half. He just seemed to know exactly where to go. Yes. yes now, so. now, how big is it? I, I saw it happen a couple times for the junior high matches. Um, that cradle you talked about for Claymont, that's kind of a staple, is it not, for Mustang wrestling? It's, it's been a, it's, it's, uh, Coach Token and called it the great equalizer. You know, it, it doesn't matter how good you are. If you get hit in a cradle, you get put in a cradle, you could be in bad position. You could be in, be in trouble. The half the ice going to have to drive across this right here. Now, see, he dumped that head side. Get yourself in trouble there. Had he that, is still in control. He's going to be in top. Mahaffey had that leg isolated for Brian, who was trying to rotate around. Obviously, uh, for Brian here, a chance to get that. Try to get the quick escape, but uh, with the Mustang lead, or excuse me, with Mahaffey's two to nothing lead. Thane's got a nice tight waist on him right now. He's going to try and drive over that to score some points here, maybe get some back. He's letting, we call that a lace when he's sitting on that ankle there. And the isolating the wrist, too, I'm going to guess, try to prevent that rotation, but a good escape there for Tristan Bryan. And we're in neutral. Doing some hand fighting in here. Thane is a veteran. He's been around, even though he hasn't wrestled since he was young. He is a veteran. He knows what he's doing out there. And he's going to have to get his hips back. Two to one is the lead for Mahaffey so far in this one as he's trying to hold on, potentially try to find an opening against Bryan, who's still driving close to that out-of-bounds line. And they're going to get a stalemate here if there's nobody can, can make any forward progress. Ooh, and that's an obble out, and they're going to be out, out of bounds. There they go out there as Rocky Dusenberry, lead official here. Somebody you've dealt with quite a bit. I'm oh, yes, guess. yes. We've seen Rocky since he started officiating 20-some years ago. Quick shot attempt by Mahaffey, and he got the single leg up. See Brian if he can. with that whizzer here. He's going to have to finish that in the next eight seconds. And he's down it. to the mat, he goes. He got it, that's two. So four to Mahaffey one. He's going to go four to one. Now there's one second left in the period. He looks like though he's going to go into the second period with a 4-1 lead, doing a great job on his feet attacking. That'd be quite the escape if you could do it in one second. Don't think that one's <laughs> going to be happening, though. And sure enough, there goes the horn. So at the end of one, and it looks like Mahaffey going to choose bottom. Thane's going to go down. Opportunity to score here on the bottom. They do call this a disadvantaged position, but most wrestlers see it as an opportunity. I had to laugh, though. We looked over there. He was looking at uh, Coach Kyle Warner, but before Coach could even tell him what he wanted, Mahaffey was already signaling down, like, no, this is where I want to go. Yeah, Bl blood time, I'm going to guess. Yeah. Looks like we got a little blood on his arm here. Just going to need to clean that up real quick. Must be out of his nose or a little scratch. Which will happen if you're new to wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> it's been known to. You know, these bonus points are so big. Mm -hmm. Those bonus points that happen right there at 150, every victory is worth three. So the bonus points are really where uh, come into play. If you, if you score a major decision, it's, it's an extra bonus. You tag fall, it's two bonus. And a, and a pin is, or a fall is technically called, it's three bonus for a total of six points. So, you know, the, in a dual match, these come into play so much. Uh, uh, the, the, the Indian Valley kid did a great job putting Trenton on his back and, and, and coming away with those three extra points. Yeah, so. it could definitely be huge, I'm going to guess, especially when you get to those later stages if things get really tight. Oh, absolutely. So Mahaffey on bottom again. It's Tristan Bryan for Indian Valley looking to try to rotate him over. 
He swings around to try to go to his head. Got his arm under on the left side, but Mahaffey doing a good job of fighting it off so far. So things just keep in good position here. He gets, needs to get his head, or his head and belly off the mat. Worst position wrestling is your back, and your second worst is your belly. So things keep in good position, and he's going to end up kitting and cutting him out, and it's 5-1 lead from Mahaffey. So for Brian here, you know, halfway through the second period, obviously down by four, you definitely don't want to make a huge mistake trying to do something that you don't necessarily have to, don't force anything. No, no, it's one point at a time. Just one point at a time is all you can plan on. Don't try big moves at, at midway through the second period. That's the last, you know, 15, 20 seconds of the third. Thane's in on a great shot here, but he stopped moving. He's Brian going to try to rotate. In. Good scrap there, nothing there. there. Yes. Good aggressive match here. Good, just old school match. Hands in the face, battling, getting after each other. Again, it's at 157 here. Indian Valley leads 12 0 early on in this duel, but Fane Mahaffey with the 5 1 lead for the Mustangs. It's another shot attempt yeah. by Brian, got stuffed. Brian in on that single, but he stopped moving. You have to keep moving. You stop there, nothing, nothing good is going to come. So they're going to end up blowing this dead here real quick. Unless he can knock him to his butt. Both sides they're deciding it's probably better to <laughs> let that one go. Nothing was going to happen. Just 10 to, seconds. 10 seconds here, yeah. Down to 10 seconds. Thane staying right in the center of that match, trying to control the center of the mat here. Brian moving forward. Brian might be down by four, but he's still plugging away. So we're going into the third, 5-1 Mahaffey. That would be choice for? Indian Valley's choice here. Okay. They're going to go down. Try to get that uh, escape point early and Absolutely. quick and then try to get uh, a nice shot in on Mahaffey, maybe try to get some back points. Seems so simple, right? <laughs> it seems easy. It sounds easy. But, you know, sometimes uh, uh, just giving up three is sometimes okay, too. You know, not giving up bonus points is huge. These dual matches, I can't, I can't over, uh, uh, overstate that, how big the bonus points here. So Brian's going to be holding on here, doing everything to stay off his back. He's going to be grabbing Thane's hands. He should be grabbing Thane's hands. They need, look, He's got grab, one for yeah. sure. Yep, that's all you need. You need one. Yep. Wrestling on top typically takes two hands. Man isolates one, you got nothing. Once again, looked like Mahaffey probably going to try to go for that cradle, as yes, you mentioned. absolutely, absolutely. He's got a leg in this, so you're not going to do much. You're not going to do any cradling there. Brian's still fighting him off, but really needs to find a way out. It's just a minute ten to go in the third. Down to a minute three left in this period. Not a lot of action from the bottom or the top. Nobody's really working to advance a lot. Both these guys really had those intense scrambles. I uh, wonder if they almost gassed themselves out quickly as Brian pops the hips out. And he's to his feet and once. So it's 5-2 match, so this, is, this match is within reach for Brian. Just going to have to get Mahaffey down quickly there as he goes go. for a There's single leg and couldn't oh. secure it. Oh, that was close. You see Thane. Thane turned his butt to the center here where he can control the center of the mat. He can shoot him out if he needs to. Thane working these underhooks. Now's about the time they're going to have to go for something big. Brian gets shoved back out of bounds, so we'll restart things in the center. So now he's down to 20 seconds. He's going to need something big. But he, Coach Braun's not going to want him to do something stupid where he ends up on his back. Potentially costing his team those bonus right, points. Right, right. Those bonus points are big. Ten seconds to go here as Brian shoots in and kind of wildly. Seems to be happy here to just and Mahaffey going to get the extra two. He's trying to run that cradle, but he's going to run out of time. Two, one. We got a we got a decision for Thane Mahaffey of the Mustangs. It's going to be twelve three after three weight classes. Twelve three. So Mustangs get something back here real quick. So we'll wait for the next class here. Looks like we got Curtis Anthony coming out here at 165 pounds. You got a senior coming out against Remington Myers, senior for the Braves. Remington Myers, their lone state qualifier last year. He won their district, did a great job wrestling 165 pounds, won their district, went down the state, got some experience. I know he's looking to get up on that podium this year. So get senior against senior here. 
Interesting dynamic, too. You said Anthony for Claymont and Myers for Indian Valley. Two kind of, obviously, both 165ers, but the different styles, you know, Remington a little bit longer and leaner, Anthony a little bit stouter. Yeah. As a quick shot in there for Myers as he had him down yep. and nearly got rotated over. That's kind of a dangerous scenario. Yeah, Curtis just reached up and grabbed his head. Um, you, you, can, you can get away with that against you know, mid-level competition. But Remington Meyer is a state qualifier, and, and he knows what he's doing up here. So I'm going to go uh, ahead and just run him out yep, and let him escape. Cut him loose and, and go on his feet. Remington solid in all three positions. That's, again, the second time he walked into that shot. So quick on that first that step outside and just gets behind Anthony. So 4-2 will be the lead. So Curtis, once again, Curtis is going to need to stop tying up. That's three times in a row. Every time he reaches up and touches Remington's head, he shucks him. Now, is there an opportunity maybe for Anthony There's, if Myers gets a little too over-aggressive, but so much for that is no, we're going to get back points. Remy's in complete control right now. We're at a 9-2 match a, a minute into the first period. Remington's going to be looking to score three bonus points and not two. He is a solid wrestler. He's got that right arm isolated back. Going to try to roll, roll him to the left, I'd guess. Well, he can, he's got a lot of options from here. So, Remington loves a cradle. You know, he, he loves a cradle. So, he's waiting on Curtis to come up, and right there he goes. And there's his cradle. If he gets that locked up, he's in trouble because Remington will kill you with it. Best. Anthony trying to fight it off to the best of his ability. And Rot it's locked. He's in trouble. Myers you gets him on fight. his back again. Yes. Ref counts away here. Racking up those points is Myers. Looking closely, trying to get his shoulders down. 25 seconds left. And he's going to get out of it, so it's going to be 12-2. Curtis so he, doing, doing his best to save off points here. Now, in that scenario, when it feels like the other guy is uh, kind of dominating from the start, is that maybe your goal a little bit just to uh, try to survive and just huh. uh, and just continue as best you can? Absolutely. Uh, there's two, one. There's going to be two more. It's going to be a 14-2 match here for the first. So That's getting, a lot of points Remington just racked up. Tremendous job up on his feet. And getting close to that tech fall territory. Right. So it will be the Indian Valley choice starting neutral. He's going to go neutral, yep. Myers probably expects he can shoot in again with the double leg, and he spins him around again with another. No points yet. There is a wizard, but he's going to take him right to his back right here. It's a lot that of strength. Pancake. This match is over. This match is officially over, but Remington's going for the, for the pin here to get that extra bonus point. Anthony trying everything he can to keep his shoulder up off the mat. Gets tough to this point. Oh, yes. Yeah, anytime you're looking up at the lights, it's, it's a bad situation. Myers doing everything he can to try to flatten him out. Still a lot of fight there. Yes. And he's in trouble there. And that and will do Myers it. Gets the fall. Remington Myers with the fall. 18-3 after four matches. And this is where the momentum we talked about comes in. This claim one is going to need to stop this bleeding real quick. As Big Z Sports rolls on here with our coverage. 18 to 3 is the lead for Indian Valley. See what weight class we're getting up to next. Well, nothing else. I just won the lottery tree, so that's exciting. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, he's not kidding either, folks. I won a lottery tree here. He's not kidding here at, at all. 175 pounds. We got Nate Burton on the mat. <laughs> we got Nate Burton on the mat. Going to be Easton Cook wrestling against him. Easton, I believe, is a senior. Easton, Easton Cook is a senior for Nate the Nate Burton's Braves. a senior also. So Nate Burton didn't wrestle last year, unfortunately, so he's a little behind on experience, but he is an athlete. So he is not afraid to get in your face and bang with anybody. Good shot, and... Fighting it off is Cook. Cook has hit that chin whip. Wow. And Burton's on his back. Burton's gonna have to fight for his life, and he's pinned. Wow. Did not see that one coming, but uh, good reaction by Cook. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, there's three lines of defense in wrestling. Your hand, hand, yeah. Your head, hands, and hips. He just took his hips right into Nate, bullied him over with them, and, and he got the fall. So now 24-3 to 3 is, your, uh, is your score here if you are the Mustangs. How do you kind of regroup for everybody who's still got to come up? What do you tell them? Well, have some pride here. Let's have some pride. You know, you've got a freshman here with Kendall, Kendall Renneker going against freshman Grady Kinsey. 
Um, uh, it, it's it, at some point you got to get some experience, have some pride here, fight for your team. Kinsey fight. flipped over Renneker right over his back. He hit a quick fire reaction. real quick right there. Now Kendall's on his belly, got to get off his belly, fight some hands, get back to his feet. Both these guys, just judging by the start there, for uh, seem to be moving uh, pretty quick, even though in those upper weight classes, and explosive effort. He just pancaked him right to his back. And Brady Kinsey's going to come up with a win. Kinsey with another pinfall for the Braves. It's now 30-3. to three. Here comes your match of the night. 215 pounds. <laughs> as, <laughs> All right, Adam. Thank you. As the win for All right. <laughs> Travis Poland. Why don't you tell the folks if uh, they haven't been out to a, a Claymont dual meet or a Claymont event here, what uh, what you just got there? Uh, well, I, it was instead of a 50-50, it's a lottery tree, and I'm hoping I'm about to be a millionaire because odds are I'm about to have fun. Now, Match not, of the night right here. We got Wyatt Shaw. We got Jackson Bircher. Wyatt Shaw, senior for the Mustangs. Jackson Bircher, I believe, is a sophomore. Jackson Wyatt a Shaw sophomore. just hit a single, took him down. There are three guarantees in life. Death, taxes, and Wyatt Shaw trying to hit a cradle. <laughs> and here it comes. Wyatt's got it. I believe he's got it locked, and he's in trouble. Wyatt's going to have him stuck. It's over. There it is. Now, for Bircher's there. sake. So there's where you stop the momentum right there. Wyatt Shaw stepping up. That's what seniors do. That's leadership needed right there. Now, I'm interested to see, uh, you know, we both these coaches said this is what you learn for in terms of tournament time. Yes. This is what you're learning from here. What could Bircher have possibly done differently there? Uh, if anything. I wouldn't have wrestled Wyatt Shaw. <laughs> <laughs> now, Fair I'll tell you what, Jackson Bircher is a heck of an athlete. Uh, uh, outstanding football player. He's an outstanding wrestler, too. He nearly qualified for the state tournament last year as a senior or as a, a, a freshman uh, up in these upper weights. So, um, um, you know, Wyatt Shaw, he's, he's, he's a man of ones, you know. Mm -hmm. One gear, fast, one forward, one direction, that's forward, and, and <laughs> one goal to, to pin you. And a big shout-out again to the Eurexville Eagles and Ron's Heating and Cooling for bringing you this dual match action tonight. It looks like it's a Carter Cottrell. Carter Cottrell. Going against Junior David Carter, Co Carter Cottrell against David Stryker. What year do you have for Sophomore him? for the Braves, another okay. sophomore. All right. And, and Carter's trying to work an inside trip here to Pierce. Stryker uh, fighting that one off. The battle of the 285s for Indian Valley. And we're going to get called for some headbutting here. Carter got a little rover really rambunctious with his forehead there. It happens. You know, these are these are mono. I was going to say, how does it not happen sometimes oh. is what I want to know. So one to nothing will be the lead for, for the Indian Valley Braves, David Stryker. <laughs> 30 to 9 is the Indian Valley one, lead. One nothing lead on a penalty point for, for David Stryker. Travis Poland meet, meeting back up with Wyatt Shaw. Oh, yeah. A little, little pride coming out there. Uh, Wyatt, you know, I spent a lot of time with a lot of these guys. We rode all over the place this, in, in, over the years, and, and, and they're good kids. They really are. So good to see them. Carter better get his elbow down, or he's just going to take his head off. Wow. Oh, there's oh two. my. There's two for Stryker. He shrugged his shoulders. Now, Carter is a roller. He is going to try and roll you. He's got his wrist right here. Now, what Stryker to get that too? what did he do correctly? He, he shrugged his shoulders. So, Carter tried to hit a head and arm or a headlock, and uh, he just shrugged his shoulders, and Carter went right over top of him. Mm. So, outstanding job. Oh, and, and got a little confusion here. Oh, he's got a slightly... Bent finger. Slightly Fingers, bent finger. <laughs> fingers bent just in a little bit in the opposite direction. So oh, that's always a good sign. That well, kind of stuff happens. It, it does. So We'll know. go ahead and uh, as we David Stryker gets attended to, we will take our first break of the night. We'll go ahead and take 30 seconds for our for our sponsors before we come back to dual meet action. Indian Valley leads 30-9. to nine. Big Z Sports is back after this. Ron's Heating and Cooling in Denison has been serving this great area since 1977. At Ron's, no matter what your needs, they can handle it. From heating and cooling to standby Generac generators, water heaters, tankless water heaters, mobile home equipment, duct cleaning, and 24-hour no heat service. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you have to do is call 740-922-5252. 
Ron's Heating and Cooling proudly supports high school sports and would like to wish best of luck to all local athletes participating this season. Back to Claymont, back to Claymont High School here is actually going to be an injury end there. David Stryker unable to continue, so the win will go to uh, Carter Cottrell, Travis. Yeah, so, yeah, he, he got his finger caught up in there somehow. Their backs were really to us. So we're going to change over to 106 pounds here. we got freshman uh, Brody Sheeran out from the Mustangs, and we got freshman Brock Albright. That Albright family has been around for a while wrestling. We've seen – It seems like they always rotate yes. on every school district. Yes, yes, yes. So this ought to be a good match. Brody Sheeran, tough kid. Good kid, Albright. Again, it's a family thing for him. So Albright's going to be up two nothing with a good high crotch, and he's working a cradle right off the rip here. What's crazy is we went from 285 to 106, and the uh, the change in the uh, how your styles is quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That 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 285, you get a lot of leaning. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's grabbing the head and leaning. Here you get leg attacks. So. So uh, this is this is old school wrestling here. Albright had him in a cradle right on the line. Not quite long enough for those back points, though. No, no, you're going to need two seconds, and he's going to be out of bounds, and that's that's going to get a restart here in the middle. Now I'm guessing for Sheeran that was good uh, heads up uh, reaction there as he realized what was happening maybe over there on the you're side. You got to know where you're at on the mat, know where that line's at. If some days it's your friend, some days it's your enemy. So <laughs> that right there was his buddy. So again, Sheeran will start on bottom there as he yes. as it was Albright who had control. And Albright's got a cradle locked up and, and it's a cross face cradle. And Brody Sheeran's in a bad way here. He's gonna have to fight that. It'll be Brock Albright oh. though with the pinfall. And we're gonna be at 36-15, is that correct? 36-15. 36-15. Braves are rolling right now. Pins all over the place, it kind of seems as I kind of wondered how that was gonna go if uh, both these teams do have a lot of wrestlers who can get the uh, shoulders down to the mat, but yeah. Here's one of the Mustangs that tend to be able to do that. This is Dane, uh, Dane Fawcett. He's he's a pretty tough boy. District qualifier last year. He is uh, he's a pinner. And he, he's fast, 113 pounder. He's going to be wrestling Dylan Moss, a sophomore. I don't mean to be taking your job. No, you're here. not. Actually, <laughs> I'm enjoying you being the one to do this because you are the wrestling expert we've got, and you've done a great job. I gotta well, say. Well, thank you, thank you. He's going to. Oh, there's two, two points in. The Dane's going to go right to work. So Dane's Fawcett was going to look like he was going to drop down for that uh, takedown, but just realized that maybe he could just spin around the back for that yes, easy two. Yeah, yep. So Moss is doing a good job fighting off those hands, but Dane is a chain wrestler. It's where you go from one thing to the next. You take whatever the man gives you. So Dane had that cradle, started off with that cradle, and uh, um, um, the, the kid broke, Moss broke his hand. So he, now you got to. Whoa. That's legal as long as you do it right. You need to travel forward. He's going to do it again. Make sure you don't land on your head. Land on your head or isn't it the arms get extended in a certain way or something? I, I can't well, remember. Well, to do that, you need to travel forward and take them over top. Okay. So, you know, it, it's dicey. Anytime you take a man's feet off the mat, mm -hmm. you're responsible for returning them. Mm -hmm. That is that is your responsibility. So, you got to watch it. You don't want to get anybody permanently injured. I was going to say, this is a wrestling match. We Everybody loves it, but by God, we, we want to walk away and live our lives. I was going to say, as brutal as it might seem for a lot of people who uh, might not know the sport very well, you are still trying to be make sure your opponent's okay. Right. You're not right. trying to hurt them. That's, no. that, that's never nobody, the nobody. You don't want anybody injured out no. of this. That's, that's, you got to wake up and look at yourself in the next day in the mirror mm -hmm. so, to know you did something. And he's going to try and shove that head down. He's got that cross wrist here. So with shoving that head down, is he still going to try to pop the hips up over his shoulders almost? You see how Dane's up off his knees here? Okay. He's driving into him. See this? He's going to get his knees off the mat, and he, all that pressure is forward. So now he's got an arm bar in on him. He's going to slowly walk that, slowly walk it, and Moss is in a bad way. Good job fighting. He's going to try and sit his butt through. Watch, here comes his butt. Moss is doing a tremendous job. What a job fighting. Just got to imagine that's all got to be the body control there yeah. to just try to keep. You got to contort in all those weird ways with the back points coming now for Fawcett. Yes. He's going to get, what, three? He, get, he got two of them out of it. So it's 4 nothing Fawcett after the first period. So for all the scenarios there for Fawcett, you know, good job getting the back points, getting that 4 nothing lead. Got to give credit to Moss, though, there for, as you said, uh, doing a pretty good job of fighting him off. Yeah, tremendous job fighting him off. Dane, Dane's tough on top. Dane's got some heavy hips on him, so uh, Moss doing a great job. There he, he, he drives that forward. 
You know, he catches that cross wrist. You've got your arm locked across your, your body. It, it, it makes, you know, standing up difficult. So now he's got some legs in. He's going to take all that pressure and put it up on his head. Again, Moss slipped him out. So great job on the bottom. As easy as some people might think for that defending being down there on the bottom, I'll just sprawl out. That's probably the worst idea in some scenarios. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's, there, that, that, that's not what you're going to want to do here. <laughs> so here comes Dean trying to run that cradle. He's got a leg in. If he can take that forward, he's going to get some back points out of this. Getting his left arm underneath the pit there and couldn't quite rotate him again, so Moss fighting him off. Doing a great job fighting. You're wrestling a veteran here when you get a hold of oh, Dean. Got caught there, though. Not oh, quite. Nope. One count. One count only. The Dane's trying to walk that up onto his back. That uh, that wrist. That's uh, we call it a hammer lock. Mm -hmm. So you're getting that evolution of what Fawcett's trying here as he's switching up to different things as he's realizing he's he can't taking quite what get he's him. given. He's yeah. taking what he's given, and when he's trying to force something, it usually doesn't go well. Moss so, again trying to fight him off. Here comes, uh, we call it a barbed wire. He's going to keep trying to walk that around. He's got to get his chest up on top of him. And now you're getting back. Now you got your arms crossed across your chest. Nearly got the shoulders down there. There it is. Dane, so Dane Fawcett with the fall. It's going to make it 21-36, Indian Valley lead. So Claymont definitely battling back here. Yeah, yeah, this match is far from over. So at 120 pounds, we'll see who takes the forfeit here. Ryan, Ryan, is that Ryan? As we again, Leroy Stiegel was going to move no, up to 126 is, uh, for Indian is, Valley. Well, Leroy is a 26 pounder, so this is going to be Ryan Jackson moving up. This is Colton Hall, okay, going to be taking the forfeit for the Mustangs at 120. And Ryan Jackson, the starting 20 pounder, is going to be bumping up to 26 against Leroy Stiegel. Stiegel. Leroy's a junior. Outstanding wrestler. Ryan's a sophomore. Got a great set of hips on him. So we'll see how this goes. Leroy's definitely bigger here. You can see the weight difference. Ryan's say, a tough kid. This is one of the weights I think you said was actually could potentially be really fun if this was the matchup that you got. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see. We'll see how it shakes out here. These are these are two kids that you could see wrestling in Columbus. Stiegel had an individual IVC title last year. Showing off why there with that takedown, and it instantly lets him back up. So they're going to be on their feet. 2-1. Two, 2-1 one. Two, one, Stiegel. Got that wrist control, but Jackson fights it off. Another single leg shot for Stiegel. And Leroy keeps pressing forward. It's what you should be doing. So Ryan's going to need to go forward here on him. You're not going to score backing up. There you go. You mentioned that size, the length advantage, I'm going to guess, for Stiegel is going to make those shots a little bit more difficult. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. There are some things you can't teach. Height's one of them. Height, so, length. Yeah. 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 Ryan's going to fight you, though. Ryan's going to fight in there. He's, he's, he's got Leroy in a bad way here. So he had a so take down score for two. So it's going to be a 4-3 match right now, just like that. Trying to rotate him around. This is the kind of stuff you need to do to get ready for Columbus. You are going to have to wrestle kids who know how to wrestle. You're going to have to win one-point matches. If you really want to be a state champion, a 5-4 match, you have to be the, be the guy with the five. Did they call a guy who wins state championship by one point? State champion. State champion. That's right. Does not change at no, all. No, it does not. It looks like Jackson tried to roll him over to his shoulders, but Stiegel rolled through and ended up taking his back. So we got 6-3 Stiegel. 24 seconds left in the first period. No one asks you about the score, right? They only ask you about the hardware. That's right. That's right. Don't tell me about the later. Show me the baby. <laughs> well, he's going to try and leg cradle. And Leroy's kind of getting himself out of position at times. Five seconds left in the period. Looks like he's going to go six into the second period with a 6-3 advantage. Saw Stiegel checking the clock there, trying to see, do I have time to make that move? And uh, decided against <laughs> nah, it. Yeah, <laughs> right or out. So Leroy Stiegel is going to go down here in the second period with that 6-3 advantage. Again, Jackson's on top. And 36-27 is your mark. A little caution. Jackson got excited. Going a little too early on the for the whistle. So... Stiegel, Stiegel hits a switch, then to his feet. 
And he's going to clear for one, making it 7-3 in the second period here. You know, looking up at the score, the nine-point lead for Indian Valley, this is all that bonus points you were talking yes, about. absolutely. Those pins come back, and, and, and they, they will haunt you. So Jackson's got, his, got Leroy's head down on the mat, and he scores. It's 7-5. Great job, Ryan Jackson. Got a tight waist in here on him. Now, Leroy looks like he's trying to roll him right to his back. He's got him hooked right up above the elbow, so Ryan needs to run to this side if he wants to avoid getting turned. Jackson, we mentioned uh, fifth place in the Doan Ford Barnesville Invitational. As you mentioned, great uh, great wrestler. He's going, like you said, he is going to fight. He is going yes, to scrap. Absolutely. Hey, that's what he's here for. He's here to, for a fight. Who wants to take a, take a forfeit anyway? That's not fun. Stiegel so. with the IVC Championship last year, so really... On paper, two points there for Stiegel. It's kind of, we're, we're getting that match you'd almost expect, judging yes. by what we've been saying for Absolutely. both these guys. Good job, Ryan Jackson, staying in this match right now. There's a big size difference. Now, Leroy's going for that cradle right now. Jackson's fighting those hands. You have to be able to lock your hands to run this. He's got to peel those fingers. Leroy is definitely able to use his length here. He's got Ryan in a, in a cradle, and Ryan stretches out, pulled it, popped the hands, and he's back to his belly. Your Better than his back. Your basic physics lesson there, leverage going to win? Yes, absolutely. He's trying to leg cradle him right here. Not a typical move you see, but he's got it. And he's going to put him on his back here if he's not careful. Ryan's got to fight. Impressive stuff by Stiegel. Don't think he got the two, though. Get him here. Referee leaning in, checking the shoulders. Jackson doing a good job of good fighting job it off. fighting Ryan Jackson. Good fight. He's gonna get three back, so it's 12-5, seven point advantage for Stiegel. Jackson's choice here in the third period. Jackson got that neck down and kept the shoulders up off the mat and kind of kept rocking that yep. leg. I'm gonna yep. guess that was keeping the momentum so that Stiegel couldn't just you know, cinch in. That was, being, that was being a gutsy kid because mm -hmm. it would have been easy to put your shoulders down right there. But that's having some guts right there. That's that's good job, Ryan Jackson. So he needs to stay out of that uh, bonus point. And Leroy just steps right behind him and shoves into him. The size advantage is killing Ryan, but he is here to fight. So Stiegel's got the 14 to five lead, minute and a half to go in the third. Again, Indian Valley leading 36-27. As we wind down, last few weight classes really, so. Claymont, if they're going to do something, they're going to need to do it quick. They need to do it now. They need to do it. 132 pounds, that's typically where Elijah Parrish would be. He's out, 138 pounds. You do have Cruz McMahon. you got a senior in there, but there's really only two left. So Jackson, they, they need something out of Jackson here in a hurry. Stiegel almost got Jackson's shoulders around again, but he fought it off. See the referee right there. Waiting to call the Jackson, trying to go out of bounds. Stiegel going to pull him back, though. And go neutral, so it's 14-6. It is still a, a major right now. Ryan's going to need to do something to get some points. He's going to need something big here with 45 seconds left in the, in the match. So, obviously, you'd love to win, but in this may be more of your scenario of just prevent that major. Well, at this point, you need something big mm -hmm. because where they're at in, in the match. You, mm -hmm. need some, you, you need a win. Mm -hmm because the math isn't going to add up real quick here if, if, he, if he's not able to, uh, to win this match. Stiegel going to try to rotate Jackson again. Gets in behind him. Back points here. Got himself a one count, and Stiegel's going to be happy to ride this out, I'm sure, with 15 seconds left and 10-point lead. Still going to try to roll him over there, locks his hands under that left armpit of Jackson, but he looks up at the clock, five seconds to go, and... Going to give the effort all the way to the end, but that's going to be the final bell. Final. 16 to 6, Stiegel wins. Puts it 40 to 27, Indian Valley, a 13 point lead with two matches left. Little extra respect there between Stiegel and Jackson. That was kind of nice. Saw Stiegel give him a pat on the back as they yeah. were both getting up before they had to do the handshake. And, you know, these guys, that's always something to point out. There's a lot of respect that goes around. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You, you know, they know what goes into it. We have 126-pounder bumped up to 132 here. This is Trevor McGar. He's a junior. Real uh, uh, great kid, real smart kid. Um, you want to come to Claymont to find him, he he's, spends most of his days at Kent State Tusk because he's really intelligent, great kid. Um, 
Is this, uh, who do we I have I think it's here? Hunter That's Albright. That's an Albright, right? Yeah. Yes. I mean, he looks just like the six-pounder. So, so uh, the only difference same, is same hairdo. This is the senior Albright. Yes, right yes. <laughs> Same hairdo. That's a good way of pointing that out. His quick back point's coming and maybe and a Albright's pinfall. Albright's got him wrapped up in a cradle. A lot of fight coming from Magar as he will escape the pin but still gives up the three after the takedown for Albright. So Albright's going to cut him. They're going to go neutral here. 40-27 again, the lead for Indian Valley as we get down to our final weight classes. It's been a fun one. It started off right hot pace for the Braves, but Claymont really battled back there in the middle. Yeah, yeah. Well, Wyatt was able to shut that down. That's that momentum we talked about earlier. You know, it, a senior stepped up and did a senior thing. He, he stopped the momentum, ran into Carter Cottrell then, and Carter got the job done. And, and uh, so, you know, there's a handful of guys here who, who really stepped up, but... This match is over. He just kind of bundled him up there. and, and uh, Hunter Albright was hunting for that from the very beginning, yeah, and he did yeah. a good job of taking advantage of an opening. So 46-27. It's going to bring us to our final match of the night. Senior Cruz McMorrow for the Mustangs. And I believe this is going to be Brogan. Gavin oh, this Hostetler? Is Hostetler. This yeah. is Hostetler here. Yeah. So a senior versus, you said McMorrow was a senior. senior. Yes, so yes. senior versus senior to round things out. Indian Valley, of course, has this one wrapped up, but see it all the way to the end. As it'd be a nice uh, nice send-off with McMorrow to send the home the home crowd uh, home happy, maybe with his own potential uh, good showing here. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's, he's going to have to fight here. Hostetler's a tough kid. One thing I can guarantee with Cruz, he will not be tired after the third. This is a kid who will outwork anybody. He might get out-techniqued, he might get out-manned, but he will not get outworked. So... Uh, Cruz better be fighting these hands real quick here. Hostetler is a cradler. Hostetler going right for it. It's almost just second nature for some of these guys as they just know exactly where to go. Yeah. The when they get down, it's always impressive. Oh, it's it's a feel. You know, you, you can feel where you're at. You can almost do this blindfolded. These guys know where they're at by, by how the man they're laying on uh, uh, is laying. They can feel it. They don't need to see it, and they know right when to go for it. They know when that head pops up is when their time to strike is. If you Try to force it, you're not going to get it. So he tried to force that crossface cradle there, and he wasn't able to get it. Now, for McMorrow's sake, stuck on bottom here, what escape route would you want to tell him right now? Uh, well, except for that one, Hostetler rolls him over. One. More back points coming, and another pinfall, and that's going to do it. Indian Valley's going to win 52 27. Another pinfall, that one from Gavin Hostetler. And, Travis, i got to say, pinfalls all over the place for both these sides, but by my count, one, two, three, four, five, I had five listed down for the Braves. Pretty uh, pretty solid performance yeah. out of them. Yeah, yeah, they did a good job. This is a veteran Indian Valley team. We knew what they had coming in. Uh, Claymont's got some veterans, but, you know, those, those guys out is really killing them. So, tremendous job by both teams tonight. Um, but this is, just a, this is just a step. You mm -hmm. know, this is not the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal cannot be a dual match. The ultimate d goal – is is Columbus? Yeah, so. what, and, and what do you take away from uh, from this? For, for we'll, we'll start with the Claymont sake. Like you said, guys being out did not help matters at all here. But pretty sizable win in this uh, for Indian Valley. So what do you, what's the biggest thing out of all the matches you saw tonight that you'd want to tell your team? I, I would tell them, look, we we know who came out to take it to the other team. Mm -hmm. Indian, it felt like Indian Valley came out to be aggressive. That's that's what they did. They went out. They went out to attack, and they did. Claymont. They, they're going to have to get on the offense. They've got a great coaching staff sitting over here. Some, a lot of skill, a lot of technique. So they're going to just have to take and believe in what their coaches are telling them and get after it. it, it you're not going to win matches sitting back. No, absolutely not. Now for Indian Valley, the, the big win for them, uh, looking ahead to tournament time. Obviously, you could say the momentum just because, you know, hey, we got the win. We walk out of a enemy territory in a happy place. But still definitely, I'm sure, areas to improve upon. That's always got to be the message. Oh, you can't be you can't be satisfied with uh, how you're wrestling in in uh, December and expect that to take you into March. You have to get better. You can always get better. You know, every day you better plan on getting to about 1% better. And uh, that's what they got to continue to do. This, this isn't the last time these two teams are going to see each other. Mm -hmm. Maybe it isn't a duel, but it's not the last time they'll see each other. They're going to see each other at IVC, potentially sectionals, definitely at districts, and even potentially states. So there's a lot of chances for these guys to wrestle each other again. Absolutely. Well, we're going to go ahead and take one final timeout, come back. We'll talk a little bit about the matches that went on here tonight. Again, Indian Valley picks up the 52-27 duel victory. Big Z Sports will be back after this. 
Make your dream home a reality with Designer Stone Company in Port Washington. They offer granite and quartz countertops, custom made to fit your home. Explore Designer Showroom to discover the possibilities for your new kitchen or bath. The Designer Stone Company is on Facebook and conveniently located on State Route 36 in Port Washington. Planning your next vacation or home improvement project and worried about managing expenses? CSB can help with that. Setting a goal is the first step to achieving your vision, and CSB's Money Manager tool helps you get started. Whether you are recovering from Christmas spending or preparing to send kids to college, the Personal Financial Management tool helps you set goals, track your spending, and monitor your progress. Money Manager is available within CSB's online banking. Check it out today. The Commercial and Savings Bank member, FDIC. Ron's Heating and Cooling in Denison has been serving this great area since 1977. At Ron's, no matter what your needs, they can handle it. From heating and cooling to standby Generac generators, water heaters, tankless water heaters, mobile home equipment, duct cleaning, and 24-hour no-heat service. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you have to do is call 740-922-5252. Ron's Heating and Cooling proudly supports high school sports and would like to wish best of luck to all local athletes participating this season. One final time from Eurexville and Claymont High School. Again, Indian Valley picks up the dual win, 52-27. And uh, Travis Pullen, first of all, a huge thank you to you, by the way, because you really led this broadcast. And, <laughs> no, 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 and we greatly appreciate it just to get that insight. You knew everything that was going on. I'm sure the fans at home loved it, too. Well, I, I appreciate the opportunity to get to uh, to speak on behalf of wrestling. I, I love the sport. You know, this is, this you know, personally, this is my uh, behind my wife and kids. This is my, this is my love. I love the sport and, and, and what it can do for people. I, I, I wish more would get involved. It's... Uh, um, it, it's, it's potentially life-changing for anybody. It really is. The, the lessons that it teaches, the, 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 there's, there's guys that I talked to, I graduated high school with, that every time we, we see each other, and some of it's been 10 years, we talk about wrestling. You know, this is, this is what you did. This is what you become. And, uh, but almost every one of those guys are successful in some aspect of their life. You know, so it's, it's uh, um, I appreciate, thank you, thank you for letting me be an ambassador here for the sport tonight. I, I'll, I, I appreciate that. Absolutely, and uh, for Indian Valley, just the final recap in for Claymont, for the final recap for that matter. Uh, Brock Albright gets the win, he pins Brody Sheeran, another pin coming for Hunter Albright, so... They can't, uh, when they go home tonight, they're not going to be arguing about who no. did better, both with the pinfalls. They'll, they'll, well, they'll, they'll go on time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, that's what a, the next thing is, is how quick did I do it? <laughs> we didn't keep track of the time, so uh, they, they won't be able to fight with us, but I'm sure they know it. Uh, Watch Gavin, the replay. Yeah, exactly. Gavin Hostetler gets the pin as well, as, as does Remington Myers. And Easton Cook, I believe, also had a pin, so I can't read my own writing. Pins for Claymont. Dane Fawcett had one on Dylan Moss. Also a win for Thane Mahaffey in a 7-2 decision. Carter Cottrell gets the win at 285 as well with an injury to David Stryker. So uh, some building blocks for the Mustangs for sure moving forward, but ultimately it's the Braves who win 52-27. One final time, a huge thank you to the Eurexville Eagles and Ron's Heating and Cooling for bringing us this broadcast tonight. A big thank you to Travis Poland as well for his insights tonight, and a big thank you to the Claxon Communications crew for live streaming all of this for you, and uh, hopefully you tune back in sometime and check out this dual meet one more time later on down the road. Again, for Big Z Sports, we'll be back at a gymnasium near you soon. Good evening, everyone, and good night. Thanks for listening to tonight's presentation of Big Z Sports and Claxon Communication High School play-by-play -play action. Be sure to subscribe to Big Z Sports on YouTube, follow Big Z Sports on Facebook, on Twitter, at Big underscore Z Sports. For the best coverage of high school sports, there's only one Big Z Sports.